explosive crits, smooth pits, massive t- Ayo? In this video, we'll be going over why Himiko, Himiko, Himi, Himiko. is absolutely goaded, <laughs> as well as your stats, skills, and much more. If you like what you see here, feel free to subscribe. Or if you want to catch me live, I'll be over on twitch.tv forward slash pocketchalk. With that, let's get into it. <laughs> Starting off, Himiko's rocking a HP stat with a well below average attack stat. Himiko's NP gain and star generation rates also sit just below average. Her first skill provides a modest attack buff along with stars. lots and lots of stars. up to 24 stars per turn when you have three allies on the field. This skill enables some niche farming potential using only crit damage instead of NPs for three turn farming. From my personal testing, the most reliable 6CE comp being a double Himiko setup with a plug-suited Mozart and Summer BB took a mere 47 seconds to farm a low HP free quest. If you're more of a Beethoven fan or just don't want to use Mozart, then if you're willing to use CEs with starting crit stars or with starting NP charge to take care of the first wave, you can replace Mozart with Artoria Ruler for more reliable damage. However, even with our Toy Ruler in the mix, a typical Buster Arts Arts card chain will only deal about 23 to 30,000 neutral crit damage per enemy in the first and second waves, and by the third wave, dealing between 27 to 61,000 crit damage per enemy, which is not nearly enough damage for most free quests. Moving on to Himiko's second skill, this provides a decent buster and niche demonic damage buff attached to an invincibility. While the damage buffs are nice, the invincibility further helps solidify her ability to stall through longer fights. As for Himiko's third skill, this provides a 50% MP charge along with a useful buster card crit star absorption boost and a massive 100% buster crit damage buff for one turn. Thanks to this skill and a double Merlin setup, Himiko can hit just over 500,000 neutral crit damage when leading off with her Buster MP into a Buster Brave chain. Although, if you're just looking at Himiko for her valuable pits, I mean crits, Super Ryan still outclasses Himiko when it comes to raw crit damage, and he'll be getting a rate up during the New Year's campaign in January of 2023. And finally, for Himiko's NP, this grants a 30 to 50% boost to the party's buster cards depending on NP level, provides two stages of NP overcharge for one time over three turns, and increases the party's critical damage between 50 to 100% depending on overcharge level. The effects from this MP work extremely well for supporting other crit DPS servants, such as Super Orion. In this example, Himiko was able to help Super Orion hit over 1 million neutral crit damage in a mere 12 turns. The overcharged boosting effect also makes stalling through longer fights more reliable and when pairing Himiko with supports who can further boost the MP charge of their allies such as Merlin, Helena, or Hans, it becomes all the more reliable to get Himiko's MP off in tandem with Castoria's to basically never take damage again. For a recommended NP level, Himiko does just fine at NP1 with very little benefits at NP2 or higher. For reference, when using Himiko's NP into a Buster Brave Chain with her own Buster cards and no other buffs aside from her own skills, Himiko deals about 70,000 damage at NP1, 74,000 damage at NP2, and 78,000 neutral crit damage by the third Buster card at NP5. So unless she's a personal favorite, MP1 is good enough. As for recommended supports, of course, Castoria, Jean, and Merlin are the best when it comes to maximizing Himiko's stalling and critting capabilities. But in case you don't have them, the next best supports for boosting Himiko's critting capabilities include Sherlock Holmes, Lan Ling, and Hans Christian Andersen. 
Sherlock sports a 20 crit star bomb on a 5 turn cooldown, and with his NP, can boost the team's crit damage by nearly 90% when used in an NP chain following Himiko's NP. The effects of this MP also grant the party pierce defense and invincibility, which come in handy for special boss fights. Lan Ling provides decent crit damage buffs from his skills and even more damage buffs from his MP, while also bringing some stalling utility with the party-wide MP drain tied to his MP. And as for Hans, he provides decent crit damage buffs as well as crit stars and MP charge per turn from his skills alone. His NP also provides decent buffs for surviving longer fights. When it comes to boosting Himiko's stalling capabilities, Murasaki Shikibu, Mash, and Bodica bring a lot to the table. Murasaki provides a few different buffs, with the most notable being her party-wide debuff immunity and buff removal resistance for one time over three turns. This is important, as while Castoria and Himiko can practically give infinite invincibility, they are still susceptible to buff removal and other debuffs, so Murasaki basically serves as the insurance policy to your insurance policy. MASH has been and is still one of the best servants in the game when it comes to stalling and tanking damage. MASH's NP in combination with Himiko's can reduce the incoming overall damage to the whole team by nearly half, with her pre-loss belt form offering even more defense buffs and her post-loss belt form offering a high buster crit buff on a very short 4 turn cooldown, along with two taunt skills. Bodica is one of the best overall lower rarity units to use alongside Himiko, boasting a 50% party-wide crit damage buff, a 2000 max HP increase that can serve as a pseudo heal, and an MP that greatly increases the team's defense and attack stats over 3 turns. Bodica is one of the best low rarity servants, who covers both Himiko's stalling and critting capabilities for longer battles. Additionally, when using Himiko's, Bodica's, and Mashi's NPs simultaneously, they can yield a 70% defense up for 3 turns and a whopping 105% defense up for 1 turn, effectively serving as an invincibility for 1 turn. <laughs> Why won't you die? No! A few honorable mentions include Arash Eagle, Medea Lily, and Chen Gong. Arash covers quite a few niches when it comes to supporting Himiko. While Arash Eagle brings some modest party wide defense, NP gain, and max HP buffs, one notable niche she brings is instant death protection, which comes as a buff to her MP around August of 2023 when used with her Blessings of Curse skill. While death is not the most common mechanic in challenge quests, people still die from death, and it's one of the few things that ignores Castoria's unpierceable invincibility. Additionally, Himiko's overcharge effect boosts the base buster card effectiveness of Arush's MP and with Arush's 50% MP battery tied to a mana burst skill, Arush becomes a star damage dealer and a stall comp that is practically invincible and immune to death. Medea Lily can provide a 100% debuff resistance with her MP when used after Himiko's MP, while also providing heals and other buffs. While Medea Lily doesn't offer much in the way of damage, she does keep the team safe from important debuffs such as stuns and NP seals. However, if you're looking to clear a challenge quest as fast as possible, the Gong might just be the way to go. When using Chen Gong's NP, after Himiko's NP, Himiko can boost Chen Gong's damage by up to 675% extra damage. For perspective, when using the Gong and a Himiko Double Castoria Plug Suit Comp, Chen Gong deals about 125,000 neutral damage per enemy, on average at level 65 with no CEs equipped. 
If you slap a level 20 non-MLB black rail on him, the damage goes up to 227,000. And if you're sporting a level 100 Nox Limit Broken Black Rail and a level 120 2K Fode Chen Gong, he'll be dealing about 470,000 neutral damage per enemy. When in doubt, gong your way out. As for recommended CEs, for stall comps, CEs that help boost her MP gauge, debuff resistance, or heal, such as Prisma Cosmos, Primeval Curse, and Anchors Away, were great for longer boss fights. For crit damage, CEs that produce crit stars or boost crit damage are all solid choices, such as Like a Bird, Knight's Pride, and Rin's Pendant. For command codes, Mistress of the Heavens, Blades of Mikandoraku, and Lucky Beast all help to either boost crit damage or keep Himiko around for longer fights. Overall, Himiko serves as an excellent crit DPS and as a support for crit teams. Thanks to her ruler class and NP effects, she can stick around for longer fights and enables the closest thing to infinite invincibility when used with servants like Castoria and Merlin. Other servants, such as Morgan, can offer similar stall potential to Himiko, but trade out one level of overcharge for a damaging NP. In short, less survivability for more damage. With that, Himiko earns an A rank from me. If you already have servants like Castoria and Space Ishtar for farming, Himeko will benefit them even more when it comes to challenging boss fights. And if you're new to the game, Himeko makes a great servant for late game content. As always, if you liked what you saw here, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to catch me live, I'll be over on twitch.tv forward slash pocketchalk. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. I'll see you on the next one. I'm not going to re-record that. Laters.